I'm going to speak about the Cherokee Nation and the Trail of Tears. How many of you have heard about the Trail of Tears? I mean, Mason and his most famous is by the Cherokees and what they went through. But what some people don't know, they were five different tribes. And they was considered, according to Barbara Kreshner of the Cobblestone, she did an article about the five civilized tribes, which were the Cherokees, the Creek, Choctaws, Chickasaws, and the Seminoles. And the reason why they was called the five civilized nation is because they actually had a form of government, law, courts, just like uh, the Europeans did. And this is before they even met the Europeans. And as you can see, in the most of the southeast of the United States is where they ha you have your Creek territory down here, Seminole, Cherokee, Choctaw, and Chickasaw. And as for the Cherokee, actually they lived in villages with 30 to 60 houses, and they had one house, of uh, one house that was the council house, which kept the sacred fire which was lit from the very beginning of time. And when the Europeans met them, they was already having an agriculture, settled into agriculture. They were growing corn, beans, squash as a primary protein for their diet, along with small game, with deer, rabbit, to go along with it. And then after they they came in contact with the, with the Europeans, and then they started trading with the Europeans. I would say white, but I'm gonna stay for that. They, was, they had a stand full of deer skins and slaves, and the slaves they had, that, that the Cherokee had, came from fighting with the other, the other tribes. I would, you just thought they was just black slaves in the United States, but there was also Indian slaves. This guy here, is, his name is Koya. He's one that came up with a way of alphabet, the Cherokee language. Which it considered of six symbols, each with a phonetic and symbolic value for each. And then if you want, at the end of the class, you can go through this booklet here I have, and you can see how the language is set up, how the words are written and everything. And then as for that, they also, some of them became Christian, turned to Christianity, not from just because the missionaries were there, but when they noticed when they had when they got smallpox after meeting with the Spanish, after they run into them, they had a bad case of smallpox. They killed about a few thousand of the Cherokee, and they realized the shamans were not working. That what they were doing was not helping with the smallpox. But then they noticed what the Europeans had helped, so they decided to transform over to Christianity. And then after, and then after working with the Europeans, even during the Revolution War, they went against the colonies, but they went and sided with the bad, wrong people. They still had tr got treated bad, and then through some other wars and against the French and the Spanish, they sided with Americans. And they, you know, they had treaties. And when they got done with the wars. They had treaties where they can stay on their land. So it was like a treaty after treaty, oh yeah, you can stay here, promise, promise from the government, and even from the, like, the state of Georgia. They even had a case against Cherokee Nation against, versus Georgia. 
and that was about and after they found gold in Georgia, then the people wanted to move them. So they created a law, and this gentleman here was the chief at the time, John Ross. Uh, he had got a delegation together, went to Washington, D.C., tried to appeal to the President and the Congress, which fell on deaf ear. Eventually, Andrew Jackson actually came up with the act, the Removal Act, to have them completely removed. And also there was a treaty called the New Ecota Treaty that the government brought up, everybody signed, except for the Cherokee. And you can just imagine that, how the Jews felt when they was in over Hitler. Because they had no choice but to be put in concentration camps, and that's exactly what they did with the Cherokee and most of the Indian tribes. Like, they did refuse to go. They forced them out of their houses. And was it, they didn't even have time to even pick up their stuff, their, their body walls or anything. They just had to leave with their clothes on their back. And, and right here is the trail. And it went just over land that they traveled on the Trail of Tears. It was all called waterways, and they did it in um, summertime when it's really drought, and then conditions were terrible. There was no food, no water. Wintertime, they froze. So that's why they, you have a lot of people that died on the way over there. And this is how some of them traveled. Either they walked or wagoned. And sometimes they didn't have barely had money, the troops, or anybody had enough money to provide provisions for them. And this is here where they were actually, eventually the Cherokees actually started dressing like the Europeans. They did everything they wanted to try to appease the Europeans so that, you know, they won't, you know, remove them from their land. But it didn't work. And this is like a scene from when in the winter time. You can just imagine that all you have, you have no other texture, and you, see, you know how cold it gets from in the Midwest. And now all through that, they are very resilient people. That's why I'm proud to say I am Cherokee. And the only way I know that I'm Cherokee is because I have done research on my mom's side of family and I found some relatives that are from the Cherokee Nation in North Carolina. And now the Cherokee, as you see on here, they have welcomed the Cherokee in the reservations. And some of these reservations actually you can go on tours. They have museums and stuff like that. And that's what they pretty much thrive on. Thrive on now is tourism. And I can actually say I've been to one up there in North Carolina when I was a little girl, and I actually did that dance. I hope you have learned a little bit more about the Cherokee tribe and the Trail of Tears, which actually went to just the Cherokees. Um, thank you for coming. Any questions? <laughs>